everyone welcome back to my channel my name is paola and today i have a very special returning guest rocky would you like to say hello and tell us a little bit about you don't have a shot hello i am i'm rocky or raquel marie and you don't have a shot is my second book that is behind me here uh i have not practiced the elevator pitch as much as i've done <laughs> ophelia so let's see how well i do in explaining it it is a ya contemporary slash romance about 17 year old valentina castillo green who is an anxious overachiever who has invested a lot of her time and energy and self-worth into soccer and at the start of the book during a very important game she causes a fight with her longtime rival Letizia Ortiz that jeopardizes the game and kind of kicks her out of the game and the good graces of her teammates her coach and her very not great father she agrees to follow along with the uh, summer plan of her two best friends to go back to the soccer camp that they went to growing up in the hope of escaping a lot of the pressure around soccer but when she gets there she finds out that the team that she is co-captaining not only is going to be playing in front of college scouts potentially at the end of the summer but they are very inexperienced and her fellow co-captain is Lucia who she fought with at the start of the book so the two of them are forced to uh work together to train their team and to maybe reignite their love of soccer and maybe their love of each other who knows Ooh. first of all we will circle back to this in a bit but i love where she like blows up at the ref and i'm yeah. like oh I love this. This is some like drag race level of reading pettiness that I was not anticipating and I was loving it. And I, of course, love the journey that ballet goes on. So what do you love about soccer? I think my favorite thing about soccer is that it is a team sport. So mm. a lot of what I love about it could be said of other team sports, maybe, but I, I remain adamant that soccer is the best um but i think having to work alongside other people and having to have a lot of trust and faith both in yourself and other people's abilities is a really substantial part of soccer and like the communication that you have to have with your teammates at all times um knowing where everyone is really building up that type of relationship with other people it's very lovely there's this camaraderie to team sports that is is hard to replicate in other areas of your life um and so i feel like sports are a very fascinating place to examine relationships because there's a lot of like the close proximity of it all but like the physicality and then also just that like relationship you build up where it's almost instinctual now of how to interact with other players i just feel like it's very cool there's a lot about it that's very a very romanticized look at soccer <laughs> but <laughs> what do you most admire about your main character this is kind of funny i admire that she's very messy but willing to try to clean some of that up she is a character whose relationship with soccer is very different than mine and she's she's very competitive and she also treats people pretty poorly throughout the book and it's clear that it is because of the, it's a very learned behavior it's this sort of cycle of abuse that she's experienced from her father and now she's sort of putting on to other people and i appreciate that throughout the book there's beats of her sort of acknowledging it and saying like i know what i'm doing is not okay right now but i almost feel like i can't stop it and learning that she does have some modicum of control about that and that it does suck that it's on her to sort of unlearn some of it but she is willing to change and she's willing to apologize to people to feel sorry about it and to try to become a better person um while also trying to balance the fact that she she like kind of hates herself and so yeah. when you have a really poor relationship with self-esteem but you also have to identify that you are messing up that can be a really difficult thing to balance and so i i admire that about her that even during some of her worst moments she's able to identify like this doesn't really make me feel good yeah i kind of just feel like my dad and being willing to change that i think is really important and kind of the thing that differentiates her from her father is that willingness to change and actually try to do better and not hurt people oh i love those moments in the book where she goes like i don't really feel like myself or i don't feel like i should be feeling i just feel like an extension of my dad oh, yeah that hit me that was really really good <laughs> so we also need to acknowledge the lovely cover oh my it's so shiny too what? it is very shiny i love it <laughs> so why slow burn why enemies to lovers what about those tropes sort of have you i feel like rivals to lovers worked really well for the sort of individual arcs that valentina and leticia are both going through because 
I remember years ago, there was like, now people say this a lot, but the first time I ever saw it, it was kind of a call out of like why people love enemies to lovers and hate to love. Just because for so many people, there's this fear that like once someone gets to know you well, like no one could ever love you if they know all of you. So the appeal to like rivals, hate, enemies to love is that someone starts off despising you, knowing all your faults and all your flaws and can still get to a place from there where they love you. And so I think that works really well for both of their characters because Valentina is someone who, who holds herself to a really high standard, but also kind of hates herself. And so she really thinks like everyone around me either despises me or is basically just tolerating me. Struggles to really feel like she's not disappointing everyone around her. And then Leticia, which we find out throughout the book, like struggles with a similar shade of this where she really thinks she's just like needs to be useful and that her role in other people's lives is to just like be useful and what happens how are people going to feel about me if i'm not as useful and so for both of them there's almost this safe space they build with each other because they're like well you already hate me so i can tell you embarrassing things i can tell you stuff i'm ashamed of things that i don't feel comfortable telling other people because you you can't go lower you already hate me and there's like a kind of funny intimacy to that because they're they become a safe space for each other to explore those things. And ironically, because they think, oh, this is going to make them dislike me, it like it humanizes them for each other, but yeah. it gives them something to bond over. And it does make them closer and sort of able to build up a relationship. There's also a inherent respect built into rivalries because Ooh. if you're competing against someone who like sucks, you're like, that's a nuisance. That's not a threat. But if you're competing against someone who's at your level, like that is a threat. And so... The fact that they're rivals and like hate each other at the start of the book, but they're and they're like shit talking each other's abilities and everything, but they only feel that way because they know the other one is good at what they're doing. I think also adds to it that they have this like inherent respect and belief in each other's abilities that allows them to sort of rely on each other. So that was fun. And slow burn, of course, because they start out disliking each other. One of my favorite elements of Valet is she's she's on like the asexual spectrum. And so at the start of the book, she's kind of like, Leticia, she acknowledges that Leticia is pretty, but she doesn't really care about yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it was like a fun thing to get to touch on because she's like, yeah, she's pretty, but I don't care. And then later on, she's like, oh, she's pretty, but suddenly it means something different to me. In my mind, I'm like, it's not even that slow burn. But people who have read it already are like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really mm-hmm. took your time. But it's beautiful. As much as I love on screen kissing and display of love, I guess, I love waiting for it too. Because it makes mm. the payoff more, much more uh, satisfac- satisfying. There we go. Yeah. 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 It's the yearning of it all. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Literally. Circling back to the comebacks. I love how snappy they are. Particularly, obviously, because we hang out with them a lot. Uh, the Purple Princesses. So, what was your favorite comeback? Right. It's funny because I think across the board, Leticia has the best comebacks of everyone. Um, she she was very unright her dialogue because basically everything Ballet says, Leticia views as an opportunity to make some type of sarcastic, vaguely flirty statement to her. But I think my favorite comeback in the entire book is actually from Marley, who is the very like sweetheart angel sunshine character because i think it's it's very funny but also it was like a good character moment for both of them and it's you know marley is being trained to become a goalie and she's like five minutes late to a practice that valentina sets up for her and valentina like makes some type of dismissive comment about oh you would be here earlier if you weren't all dressed up because Marley likes to do like glitter in her hair and all this stuff like she gets really excited to dress up for the practices and so Marley makes some type of comment I'm gonna botch it but where she's basically like if you like if never exfoliating your face and never moisturizing <laughs> your knees like makes you happy all the power to you but let's not like criticize how other girls get like our gender euphoria and I love that because I think it's very funny but also it's a moment where Valentina does have to apologize and recognize that like She's under pressure and she's stressed because of her dad again. And so she just like says something to someone without realizing like that hurts that person. Like this is like an actual thing. It's not a passive comment. That is something you are like targeting someone that they care about for. So she does have to apologize. But it was also important that like I didn't want the characters around Ballet to just like take her shit at all times. Yeah. <laughs> and so Marley being like a very sweet character who throughout the book is often just like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm like happy to be involved. I'm happy people are like 
even letting me be here for her to stand up to Valentina and be like no this is something that you don't get to touch you don't get to take this away from me I think was really important but it, again I also just think it's a very funny line it was incredible I was like oh Marley I love them so much um and I also love Vale like she really is like towing the line between being the like the Sharpay Evans and the Rachel Berry of soccer. I love her though. She's a very likable version of Rachel Berry. Also, speaking of the Purple Princesses, I wanted to play a little throwback game because we did this also with Ophelia's characters. Who yes. is most likely to? So this one is already a given, but I still love to hear the answer. <laughs> most likely to have a snappy comeback. Lucia. Most likely to have the best snacks. It's funny, part of me almost wants to say Vale for this because she is so like type A organized, like, and she does like throw a little pizza party for the team at one point and she like works in the cafeteria, she works at Uncle's restaurant. So I feel like she would be the most prepared for it, but like in more of a like very serious like yeah. <laughs> logistics. Way. I brought Unless protein like, bars because okay. we need them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most likely to crack a joke in the middle of an awkward moment. I'm gonna say Kiko probably because there are moments that yep. she does do that. Most likely to be the life of the party. I feel like I also want to say Kiko for this but a little bit Marley too because Marley from the start is very like hyping everyone up like cheerleader for everyone. She's very positive and so I think the two of them together are yeah. at, at many times the things that are sort of brightening everyone during the the tougher moments most likely to become the purple princess's mascot I'm also probably gonna say marley because again she's like the most encouraging and she also she does her her hair and her makeup for all the games like she's the she's like dressed the cutest for the games yes so she'd be the cutest mascot but she also is the character that kind of she becomes a goalie with no experience for that and the goalie is like such a central part of a team so i feel like she is the most inexperienced of all the players and is the one who i think goes through a lot of growth and development um but also from the beginning is very much like i believe in everyone i'm happy to be here i support you all so i think she's a good like central unit for the team yes oh, i love marley so much finally a fun descendants related question because i have to so who's most likely to have on the descendant soundtrack as they like go for a run or while they're warming up i don't know who's most likely but i definitely feel like chilling like a villain could be yes. on the like team hype up practice playlist or something and i say that both because it's my favorite song from the trilogy so i'm a little biased but also because like Thematically, it is about someone being trained in villainry, and though yeah. soccer and villainry are not synonymous, like there's kind of that comparison of like someone being trained in something and, and building up. And I have a lot of like very happy, upbeat songs like that in my mind for like training montages when I was writing. So I feel like that would fit nicely. So someone, someone would slide it into the the practice playlist and then not claim responsibility for it. But I feel like it could be there. <laughs> yes. Oh, that song is so freaking good and i feel like it you can play that without context and people would be oh this is a yes. good song this is not a yeah, disney exactly. song yeah yeah they, you know, just don't tell them and they won't know it's just exactly a good song. <laughs> exactly if you don't have a shot pass eventually a movie adaptation what would you like the tagline to be it's funny because like the title itself is almost a tagline like you don't mm. have a shot the original title that i had proposed the book with or, or sold it on was there's no us and team which <laughs> was not a title i cared about that much so I was, when they were like maybe something else i was like that's so fine i don't really care but i feel like that could be like a cute ish one it's like a little clunky but you know the there's no i and team like there's no us and team but also just like the cliche uh all spent here in love and soccer or something oh. like that Oh, I, I like that like one, yes. Good. But I also feel like You Don't Have a Shot in and of itself is already kind of a tagline. Yeah, I love the title. I remember when you released it, I was like, yes, let's go. Yeah. Someone at my publisher came up with it, but no one ever told me who, like, because we couldn't figure out a title. And I was like, name it whatever. I can't <laughs> come up with a good idea. Um, but I love that title, and it also comes into play in the book. So yes. uh, I felt like that was perfect. Do you have anything else that you want to plug or anything else that you want to add? I think just that I'm super excited for people to read this book book um it's very cool that it's my second book and i'm especially like proud and grateful and happy that in the current political climate at least in the united states regarding like queer and trans youth um this book has a lot of queer characters has trans characters in sports and even though like some of the issues regarding that is is touched on 
a lot of it is just like an inclusive space for like queer and trans kids to be playing sports together. Um, so I'm very grateful that that is out there in the midst of this all that can hopefully be uh, be a fun time for some people. Yes. Oh my God. Please go check out You Don't Have a Shot by the one and only Raquel Marie. It is so freaking good. Perfect for <laughs> soccer fans, non-soccer fans, enemies to lovers, lovers. It's really really good thank you rocky for doing this again with me i love having you on the channel and thank you everybody thank else you. for watching don't forget to check the links below for buy links for you don't have a shot and yeah we'll see you next time bye bye